Located some 60 miles away from the bustling city of Barcelona, Tarragona is a far more peaceful and quiet city that still has a good deal of historical sites, as well as a first class view along the coastline of the Mediterranean Sea. Being derived from the Roman city of Taraco, which was established here, a lot of the attractions date from the time the Roman Empire ruled the lands, but Tarragona also has an impressive medieval cathedral that is equally worth a look around. From the large spacious nave of the basilica to the peaceful environment that is the cloister gardens, it should not be missed if you were to take a day trip out to the sea from Barcelona. You may have seen from my other video on Tarragona that this city's main claim to fame today for historical landmarks is the impressive number of Roman sites that can be seen from sections of Roman city wall to the complete aqueduct known as Pont del Diablo. Before the Romans, however, a settlement at this site was believed to have been first established by the Phoenicians in the 7th century BC. During the Roman invasion of Iberia as part of the wider Punic Wars, the city of Taraco was established which became a thriving city by the 1st century AD. By the 3rd century AD, Roman rule over the majority of Europe had started to break down, and the province found itself raided by tribes before finally being occupied by the Visigoths in the 5th century AD. Various Muslim caliphates such as the Umayyads and the Almoravids then controlled the region from the mid 8th century AD to 1117. Christian rule was then returned when the county of Barcelona took back the city, which was by then known as Tarragona. It was during the mid-12th century that work started on the Cathedral of Tarragona, which was completed with the addition of a bell tower by the 14th century. After the Middle Ages, the city found itself embroiled in various conflicts from the 17th to 20th centuries, such as the War of Spanish Succession, the Peninsula War, and the Spanish Civil War, but despite all this, the city's been able to hold on to much of its historical past. If you are arriving from the train station by the seafront, there just seems to be an endless number of slopes and stairways to ascend before the cathedral is reached. I'm not too bad with uphill places, but at every turn it seemed to be even more stairs to climb in amongst the maze of small streets that make up the centre of the old city of Tarragona. Eventually, a large front facade of a cathedral is in view, with a large rose window and a cavernous looking arched entrance as the most striking features. Better views of the outside of the cathedral can be seen by walking around the side streets, However, it is certainly a building that is difficult to get a whole picture of from ground level. If you have already seen the Gothic cathedrals and basilicas of Barcelona that were built in the 13th to 15th centuries, this cathedral is very different in architectural style. Instead of the darker stone used in the construction of these buildings that made them feel like some sort of ominous cathedral where a vampire probably lives, the Cathedral of Tarragona is built from almost white coloured stone, which makes it appear very clean. As you walk towards the altar, you'll notice that the pillars are far thicker in diameter than their Barcelona counterparts. At one point this cathedral was probably very decorated, as when you walk around you'll see quite a lot of medieval paintwork on the walls. Parts of it, like this bit here, are quite faded now, however keep an eye out because you'll see quite a bit of it. Back in Britain, the same sort of thing can be seen around many cathedrals and abbeys, where the originally very brightly painted interiors full of multicoloured arches and pillars were whitewashed after the Reformation in the 16th century. With a lot of large open white spaces, it is quite easy to miss all the small intricate details that hide amongst this cathedral. The best things to look out for are these little sculptures that adorn the bottom of some small decorative arches. 
This part near the altar has figures of musicians, with one playing a lyre, a figure that looks like a king with a violin, a right smart guy playing both a flute and a drum at the same time, and another playing a um, an aubergine. There are quite a few interesting sculptures at this cathedral as well. For instance, the one behind me is of a winged angel about to slaughter a demon with a sword. Moving on from the basilica of the cathedral, the most scenic and peaceful area within the complex is the cloister, which was built in the early 13th century. On entering the immaculately maintained garden within the cloister, it is easy to get a feeling of serenity with the surrounding environment, as there is a fountain, lime trees and other plants and flowers within the grounds. All of this is enclosed with the ornate cloister that stretches around the perimeter in a series of arches supported by four pillars each, and you can also take a look at the fish in the pond that look particularly bored. Walking around the cloister itself, you'll notice a few rooms and chapels that lead off to be explored. Among these is a room situated over the site where a Roman temple dedicated to the Emperor Augustus was established and you can also see fragments of the foundations that were incorporated into the later medieval complex. Another room showcases some impressive examples of vibrant and colourful medieval artworks. Medieval artwork can be absolutely fascinating. Sometimes you can take a look at a painting and have no clue as to what was going on in the mind of the person who painted it. Maybe it's just because I have and at times a questionable sense of humour, but mixing the almost cartoon style characters that were prevalent in medieval artworks with scenes that show graphic violence and disturbing imagery, it just seems funny. Some medieval art was designed to scare people as a warning of the horrors that await them on Judgment Day for the sinful, but I personally wouldn't mind meeting those horned demon things. I bet they enjoy a good metal concert like I would. The Cathedral at Tarragona provides a massive comparison in architectural styles compared to the Gothic Cathedral and Basilicas of Barcelona, even though there is only about a century's difference between the dates that they were built within. It certainly pays to take a longer time exploring the cathedral, as so many small details can easily be missed on the first time around, and the additional rooms off from the cloister holding displays means there is plenty to take a look at. The rest of Tarragona itself is easy to get around, as the most impressive historical sites are within a small radius of each other, so getting the cathedral and a number of the Roman sites ticked off should easily be doable within a day trip, and that's even including an excursion out to the Pont del Diablo aqueduct. If you have enjoyed this video then please consider leaving a like and following my channel for more. I'll have more from Spain and many other places to come. So until next time, see you around.